how can we reduce our render times by optimizing our materials in Cinema 4D? That's coming up. Stay tuned. What's up, Survivalists? It's Jay from Team WNJ here. If you're new here, I upload new videos just like this on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So subscribe now and hit that bell icon to not miss a single upload. If you're returning, welcome back. Great to see you again. Leave a comment so I can remember who you are. We didn't quite reach our goal last time, so let's try to reach five likes. On to the video. Alrighty, so here we are in Cinema 4D. If we look down here, we have our material editor. Let's double click on this first material. Now I've already created this material and applied it to the shader ball. All we have in the material editor is the color channel. And in the color channel, we have a single 3K texture. If we render this at 1080p with nothing but ambient occlusion, it takes us four seconds to render. So that's our benchmark. One channel with one texture at 1080p with just ambient occlusion takes four seconds. And this looks all right. If you have something in the distance, you don't have to put too much effort onto it. Simply drag and drop a texture on and you're done. Let's go back to our material editor and look at the second channel. We have our diffusion channel. What this does is add little imperfections to your textures. So for example, here I have some noise on the texture. You could use this if your texture seems a bit too perfect and it doesn't seem to add too much render time. I personally don't use the diffusion channel too much because it's not that useful, but it's there if you need it. Going down the list, we have something more useful. This is the luminance channel. Enabling this allows your object to produce light only when global illumination is enabled. When you render a luminance object without global illumination, this is what it looks like. It also takes four seconds to render. Now here's a render with global illumination. As you can see, the luminance channel is now emitting light that's bouncing off of the other objects. You really only need to do this when you really want your object to have physically accurate light emission. Alternatively, instead of eight timings your render time, turn off global illumination, create a omni light and position it directly in your object. Set the color of your light to match the luminance, go to the details tab and turn your fall off to inverse square, then narrow down the fall off range. Finally, go into the project tab and drag the object into the exclude field. Now when you render, the luminance channel doesn't actually emit light, but it looks like it does, and you save a lot of render time. Next down the list on our material editor is the transparency channel. Now this one has the potential to have a massive hit on your render time. Let's say for example, you wanted to turn the shader ball into glass. Let's turn off the color channel and render to see what happens. As you can see, even though the object is completely invisible, it almost takes four times as long to render. Now obviously glass is not completely invisible, it has refraction. So let's add some refraction and see what happens. To do that, all I'm gonna do is switch my refraction preset over here to glass. Now when we render, it's gonna take significantly longer. Two hours later. Wow, a whopping one minute 31 seconds as opposed to four. Now that's not even all you can do. If you want to frost the glass, something you could do is change up this blurriness. So if I set this to say 20% and then now render, Alrighty, was that really worth 6 minutes 16 seconds? We have to find a way to optimize these and fortunately there are, but they do come at relatively high sacrifices. Let's take a look at our options. For starters, ask yourself if you really need refraction. Now if you're trying to go for photorealism then the answer is pretty obvious. But if you're making a cartoon like I am with Levis Lear, maybe you don't really need refraction. So you go ahead and reset your refraction back to 1 but your entire thing is now invisible. Not to worry, all you have to do to make it opaque is lower down the brightness value over here. Now we have something that renders in 14 seconds as opposed to 1 minute 31, but it doesn't quite look like glass. If you think you could get away with calling this glass and it fits in your world of what you're doing, hey, you can save a lot of time doing this. All right, but let's say you also want that blurriness. How would you optimize that? Well, these sample settings and the accuracy setting over here is the way to do it. Let's lower down our max samples way down to something like 16 and up our minimum samples to say eight. Let's also lower the accuracy down to say 25. I'm gonna re-enable the refraction as well just to make this look a bit better. Instantly, you can see that this is much, much faster and is generating a really similar result. All right, so one minute 33 seconds, a lot faster than six minutes 16 and this is the difference. Now, I did forget to turn my brightness back up to 100, but they're relatively the same. One last thing you can do to optimize glass is to go up to your render settings and in your options, turn the ray depth down to say seven. All right, so with just refraction enabled, we managed to cut one minute 31 down to one minute flat. We still have our refraction and it doesn't look as good, but I reckon you could still call this glass. Next down the list is reflectance. Now by default, the reflectance channel will have a default reflectance. Remove that, don't use it. Add your own reflectance. If you're making a metal, use GGX. If you're using a non-metal, use Beckman. For this example, I'm gonna be going with GGX. And by default, you have this metal here. You never wanna render to the default metal, so let's go down to layer Fresnel over here and enable the conductor Fresnel. And let's set the preset to say, gold. 
Now, if you're doing a non-metal, you want to set your Fresnel to dielectric, but because this is a metal, we're using a conductor. Now, let's render this on default settings, see what it looks like. There we go. There's our gold material in eight seconds. Now, I'm having a problem telling where the edges of this thing are, so what I'm going to do is go into the diffusion channel and add an ambient occlusion texture. This will add a slight shadow around the edges of the object just so I can tell where the edges are. By adding the ambient occlusion, it brings us up to 13 seconds. Let's use that as a baseline. I was pretty surprised when I found out the reflection doesn't actually take that long to render. What does take a long time for it to render is when you start blurring the reflection. So if we up the roughness over here, you're gonna notice that the reflection gets blurrier and blurrier. A lot of the times, this is what you'll be doing. So let's blur this up to say 20% give or take, and let's render this to see how it looks. Eventually. As you can see, all of a sudden, our render time has been brought up to 45 seconds. That versus 13. How do we optimize this one? Something you can try is dropping the sampling subdivisions in the layer sampling options of the reflectance channel. The lower you go, the worse it looks, but the faster it renders. You're gonna have to weigh the pros and cons for yourself and determine what's right for you. Alternatively, if you have Photoshop installed, open up your background in Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and simply blur this until you're satisfied. Once you're done, press OK. Save this as a separate file. Go back to cinema, and what we're gonna do is trick the reflection into reflecting just the blurry image. So in our reflectance channel, we can turn our roughness back down to zero now. Let's duplicate our background material and add the blurry texture on. Let's duplicate our sky and drag the blurry texture as the background. Right click the original sky, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and go into the Compositing tag. And let's uncheck Scene by Reflection. Now we don't want our blurry background to show up in the final render, so let's right click on the new sky, go to Cinema 4D tags and compositing tag once again, and let's uncheck scene by camera. Now when we render, we get the blurry background. This doesn't look perfect, but it's a lot faster. Next up down the list is environment. I honestly have no idea what this does, so I'm just gonna skip over it. Fog, this one is pretty cool, but I've only really needed to use it for water. So what this one does is add a little bit of clouds inside your object. If you ever wanna make aerogel or something, there you go. Now there's not really much you can do to optimize this, and I don't think you'd be using it much anyway, but if you know any way of optimizing it, feel free to let me know. Next up, and here's where it gets exciting, is the bump channel. By enabling it instantly, you see that things start getting 3D. Now for the bump channel to work, you're gonna have to supply it with a texture. The texture is black and white, and what the bump channel will do is take a look at the white parts and raise them, take a look at the black parts and push them down. This gives the illusion of 3D, but it's not actually 3D. Let's take a look at how this renders using color and the bump channel. It actually only takes four seconds, which is exactly the same as our first render, but you can see a little bit of depth has been added. That's not the only way to add depth because the normal channel is next. The normal channel is another way to fake 3D. But for the channel to work, you will need a normal map, which is a blue, green, and red texture, and somehow through magic determine that it's 3D. With just the normal and color channel enabled, it takes four seconds to render, but adds a lot more depth. Take a look at that. Now the bright people here are already saying enable both the bump and the normal channel. That's of course what we're gonna do. And let's render both of these together. We get lots of depth for four seconds of render. That is spectacular. Not many ways of optimizing this, so let's move on to the next channel, and this is the Alpha channel. The Alpha channel basically works the same as the Transparency channel, but uses an Alpha map. An Alpha map is a black and white image texture, and what the Alpha channel does is take a look at the black parts and makes them 100% transparent, takes a look at the white parts and makes them 100% visible. Now, if I put on Ambient Occlusion, say, all the edges are gonna be transparent, but everything else is gonna be visible. Now, the problem with the Alpha channel is that all of a sudden, things take forever to load. Now, if you're doing any sort of Minecraft animation, you're probably guilty of this. Mineways, which is the program you export your Minecraft worlds in, automatically gives you an alpha map that you can use to alpha out, say, glass, flowers, grass, etc. What a lot of people do is use the alpha map on everything, even blocks that aren't transparent. And that ends up just increasing your render times for no reason. Uh. Like, look, this is ridiculous. Four minutes of render and how much of this is transparent? Like 10%. Never use the alpha map when you don't need it. Waste of time. Next up is the glow channel, and this will just make your object glow. It honestly shouldn't take that much render time away. There you go, it just adds a second. Cool effect, nothing too special. Again, if you know a way to optimize this, feel free to let me know. The final exciting effect is displacement. By enabling this instantly, our material starts flipping out and going to spikes. Don't worry, that's not how it actually looks in the render. Unlike the bump and normal map, the displacement map actually displaces your mesh. 
So it doesn't have to fake 3D, it is 3D. For the displacement channel to work, it requires a displacement map. It works exactly the same way as a bump map does, so I've just used the same bump map for the displacement. Now, because it is changing the mesh, it will take longer to render. A few moments later. This is how it looks with just the displacement map and it takes 26 seconds to render. If you're going for photorealism, the displacement map is the way to go. But again, if you're doing a cartoon, consider just using the bump and normal. For all that are curious, this is what the bump, normal, and displacement all at the same time look like. You get some very nice 3D textures for 27 seconds. That's actually not too bad. Let's take a look at how we can optimize our displacement. Now you're gonna notice that I have sub polygon displacement enabled. If we take a look at the polygons of the shader ball, you can see quite a few polygons here, but not too many. The sub polygon displacement basically splits each individual polygons up to four times. Now you can up this value, but obviously that increases your polygon count exponentially. That also means that you have more detail, but you gotta ask yourself, is it worth the extra render time? If I disable sub poly displacement, this is what the displacement channel looks like. It takes five seconds and I honestly can't tell if this is 3D or not. There's not enough polygons to bring out that detail. Sub poly displacement has to be enabled for my displacement channel to work. If I say drop the subdivision level to two, for example, let's see how this looks. Now this takes 15 seconds and just looks like it has some sort of weird cancer. So for me in this scenario, lowering the count didn't seem to work. It did save render time, but it completely ruined the effect. Try it out for yourself in your scenario and you may potentially save a lot of time. Now that's every single material in Cinema 4D and how you can optimize them. Next week, we'll be talking about optimizing your workflow. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you've got a dollar spare, make it count by checking out our awesome tiers on patreon.com slash teamwnj. Cheers.